Well, FL Studio is pretty kick-ass when it comes to step sequencer, but it knocked Logic Store with the new 10.5 update. Now there are various videos out there explaining how to get started and quite frankly I'm a bit late to the party, but this video isn't about that. In this video we're going to be looking at some hidden features and some advanced tricks on how to use the pattern or the step sequencer inside of Logic, so let's roll. First thing is to go to this plus sign over here go to kit pieces and select add all so as you can see we have all of these samples ready in the pattern region but we don't have the shaker and the crash sample so just select add all and those will add the new uh, samples that you were not able to see earlier next to that we have the pattern playback step rate and this defines how fast your notes would be played or when the notes would be played in this pattern so if you want to play 16th notes every 16 notes just select that or if you want to go for 32 notes just select that a small example if i were to give you a simple kick and snare pattern and now if i select the 32 notes so it goes every downbeat Next to this, you have something very interesting and hidden. And this is often overlooked when creating patterns, which is the pattern playback direction. So you have the forward direction, you have backward, you have forward and backward and randomized. So if I select the backward, it would start playback from the 30 second step and it will go backwards. Or if I select forward and backward, it will go forward and then come back. And the most interesting feature is the randomize. Now, this will be a little off key when you're playing with drum patterns, but this direction comes in really handy when you have some sort of uh, a synth loaded and you load in a pattern and you just punch in some notes. And this creates very interesting soundscapes. Just give it a listen. So this will be very handy when you just want to create some sort of arpeggios and this is very difficult to replicate in a normal MIDI region. So you just punch in the notes inside that same scale uh, of the song that you're creating and you can create some interesting melodies and some ARP sort of uh, uh, melodies here and there with this option. So another interesting feature is that if you go to the functions, you have options to transpose one semitone above and down or an octave up and down. And this octave might come in handy when you're creating some sort of chords or pads, just like I showed you. But the semitone up and down might be helpful when you are creating some trap beats, some uh, down tempo hats and snares. So it comes in really handy that you can select each and every row or entire pattern and then transpose it. So this also is very interesting uh, when it comes to uh, transposing the entire pattern itself. Next to that, you have the pattern browser and the pattern inspector buttons. Now the pattern browser has some user presets, which you can save. So if you're, let's say you've created some sort of a drum pattern in one song and you're liking it, you wanna save that as a pattern, you can do that. Or you can use in built-in patterns over here. So you have drum patterns, various drum patterns, and it will uh, take in the samples inside of Logic and will just create some patterns. You also have melodic patterns, so it comes in really handy when you just need to start uh, producing and you have an idea uh, and you can just load in some samples and it gives a good way to start your music composition journey. The inspector button gives more control over the entire pattern. So you can select the pattern length, you can select the rate, uh, direction. So these are just the, the points which are over here, but laid down in a more visually accessible way so that it's easier for you to just select that. So you definitely have the modes options over here, but you can also access them as a drop down of each sample. Uh, and this comes in really handy in a way that earlier I used to uh, just step in some nodes. And then if I wanted to use some modes, I would go here and I would reduce the velocity, let's say, uh, reduce the chance. 
And if I want to punch in another note, I would have to go back to the step on and off, punch in that, go back to the mode section. And it's it's a little cumbersome to do this way. So how I like to keep this is that have the step on and off button switched on. Click on the drop down, select all of the modes, and then you can audition it while tweaking all of the modes. So it's pretty simple and it saves a lot of time just going back and forth from stepping on and off and then going to the modes. And then if you want to just create some pattern, it's pretty quick here, just punch in the notes and tweak the modes. So this comes in really handy and this will be a savior when you're in the creative process. Next, you also have the ability to change the pattern length. So you just want 16 steps, so it will repeat after every fourth bar. Or if you want 32 steps, you can do some uh, changes over here and then it will repeat every eighth bars. Go ahead and experiment yourself and if you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below and I'll be happy to get back to you. Okay, okay guys, that about wraps it up for this video. I hope you found this helpful. Let me know in the comments down below your thoughts or any comments regarding the pattern or the step sequencer in Logic Pro. As always, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you like what I do here and want to see much more videos like this, support the channel by subscribing. It goes a long way. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Till then, cheers.